Later this month, uh, Intel will be launching their brand new processors under a brand new name. So they're actually dropping the Core i naming and going with the Core Ultra instead. And they will also be starting with the 200 series for some reason instead of the uh, 100 series. Anyway, uh, these new CPUs will require new motherboards with a new LGA 1851 socket. So in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about these six new Z890 motherboards from ASUS. Now, I cannot really talk about the CPU performance just yet, so I'm mostly going to focus on the uh, overall feature sets that these motherboards have to offer, uh, what sets them apart from each other, how much will they cost, and most importantly, how to choose a model that makes the most sense for you. So let's begin. In terms of general upgrades, uh, there's not a lot that is actually new with this new chipset. It is mostly some improvements over what we saw on the Z790 motherboard. So uh, Thunderbolt 4, for example, is now standard on most motherboards. A lot of them will support Wi-Fi 7 as well. Uh, they will support higher memory speeds more easily. And since these new CPUs will have 24 PCIe lanes instead of 20, uh, there will be more PCI Express Gen 5 support and the ability to use a Gen 5 SSD without reducing your GPU's bandwidth, which is definitely a nice step forward. When it comes to ASUS specifically, a lot of the focus is on the BIOS with AI being a keyword, as you would probably expect. So they are expanding on their AI automatic overclocking options, uh, AI cooling options that can automatically find a good balance between performance and noise for your fans. And they also have a tuning feature called the Dim Fit uh, that will try to find the optimal memory setting for your system. But uh, we will have to see how all that will play out in the real world scenarios in the coming months. But uh, let's talk about each one of these motherboards that I have here. And as before, I'm going to start with the most basic model, which is the uh, Tough Gaming Z890 Plus Wi-Fi, and then work my way down the stack. Now, it's not really fair to call this tough board the most basic one because feature-wise, it already has more than a lot of high-end motherboards from a few years ago. You get four M.2 slots, uh, three of them are heat synced. The main Gen 5 one on top looks very nice with a little tough logo on the side and it has a nice mechanical clicky system to install it. Every M.2 slot is also toolless, but you do need a screwdriver to remove the bottom heat sink. You get seven fan headers, uh, three addressable RGB headers, two internal USB 2 headers, one USB 3 header, and a 20 gigabit USB Type-C connection with fast charging support. Now, there are plenty of convenience features as well. Uh, the IO shield is integrated, you get debug LEDs, and you get a button to easily release your GPU. On the back, you get eight USB ports in total, uh, three five gigabit ones, three 10 gigabit ones, a 20 gigabit one, and one Thunderbolt 4 port, uh, which also functions as a proper 40 gigabit USB 4 port. You get an HDMI and DisplayPort connection, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, Wi-Fi 7 with a nice clicky connector and for audio you get an AOC 1220p chip with support for 7.1 as well as an optical connection so that is quite a lot. On the VRM side there are 20 power stages total, uh, 16 of those are for the CPU and it has pretty big heat sinks on all of them. Again I cannot really talk about performance but with the new chips being more power efficient than the last generation ones. And considering the fact that previous stuff boards with similar power setups were already an overkill, I really don't think that this board will struggle with a new Core Ultra 9 processor, for example, and then even with an overclock. The tough here is missing some uh, more enthusiast features like physical buttons or a hex display. It doesn't have any specific water cooling headers or voltage measuring points, but keep in mind, for most gaming systems and workstations, uh, this motherboard will be more than enough. My only real complaint here is the lack of a heatsink on one SSD slot that is exactly under the GPU and might actually run the hottest because of that. The next step up from the TUF series is the Strix line and the entry level model is the Strix A. Now visually it is a gorgeous looking white silver motherboard with a bit more RGB than the TUF one. Uh, in terms of connections it adds a fifth M.2 SSD slot and this time around all of them are heat synced. 
The top one has a sturdy locking mechanism, which is something you will see on every board positioned above this one as well. Uh, you get eight fan headers this time around, and on the back there are now 10 USB ports total, including two Thunderbolt ones instead of one on the top board. You do get a physical on-off button as well, which is pretty nice, and the new GPU release mechanism doesn't require you to push a button. You just remove the GPU by pulling a bit on the expansion slot side, and it will come out without any effort, so this should make GPU removal even easier than it was before. VRM-wise, uh, you get a slightly upgraded 16 times 90 amp power stage setup for the CPU, so again, more than enough for any upcoming processor. The Strix F is the next step up, and other than a slightly different look, uh, not that much is different on the board itself. You get a slightly upgraded 16 times 110 amp VRM setup, and you do get a second USB 3.0 header, so if you have a case with more USB ports on the front, uh, that might come in handy. The biggest upgrade is on the back, uh, when you now get 12 USB ports and two Thunderbolt ports, so 14 ports in total, uh, which is more than any other board in this ASUS lineup. Uh, once again, the only thing that is missing here and that some people might care about is the hex display and some more enthusiast features. Next up is the ROG Maximus Z890 Hero, and this is definitely a model for people that really like to do a bit more with their hardware. So this one does have a hex display, it has buttons, it has a thick backplate on the back so you don't touch the PCB when you're playing with it, and it is just a really solid and a really pretty motherboard overall. It comes with 22 110 amp power stages just for the CPU, so if you thought that the Strix board is not overkill enough, this one should let you go nuts with overclocking. It comes with 6 M.2 slots, uh, all of them are heat synced, and it adds a second Type-C header as well, which is great for some cases that come with multiple Type-C ports on the front I.O. It also comes with a slim SAS connector on the side, which I didn't really expect to see anymore, so that might be interesting to some of you. On the rear I.O. you get a few USB ports less compared to the Strix F because uh, they had to free some up for the extra front panel connector, uh, but to be honest this is still quite enough for most people out there. The one thing that I don't like as much is that uh, while they added a second Ethernet connection, uh, you get a 2.5 and a 5 gigabit version and not the 10 gigabit one. Uh, it was the same with the Z790 launch and relaunch, and keep in mind that uh, some directly competing boards do have that. Now, 10 gig networking is becoming more and more popular and affordable, and it's just disappointing that the ultimate hobby ROG board uh, doesn't have it. The next model is the ROG Apex that is pretty much meant for die-hard overclockers. It is mostly the same board as the Hero, uh, just with two memory slots for technically higher memory overclocks, and it has a lot of extra options for overclocking and uh, LN2 use, and it comes with a little memory fan kit as well. But it's still a completely viable board for regular use, uh, and unlike some previous OC boards, this one can power the integrated GPU, uh, even if it doesn't have GPU outputs. The rest of the features are pretty much the same uh, as on the Hero, uh, so it has eight fan headers, uh, three addressable RGB headers, uh, six M.2 slots, two of which uh, via the DIMM.2 slot next to the memory, uh, plenty of USB connections, and so on. So if you really love the way this motherboard looks and you have a lot of money to spend, uh, you won't be missing anything. And the same can be said for this flagship ROG Maximus Extreme model. Now, all of the previous boards were regular ATX sized, while this one is a massive extended ATX board with every single feature that ASUS could think of. So compared to the Hero, it adds two more power stages for even more overkill. It adds the voltage measuring, OC, and water cooling options from the Apex. And on top of that, it looks even more high-end with most of the connections being on the side of the board, and with an even larger I.O. cover that has a customizable display and that can be moved a bit depending on whether your case has a rear fan covering it or not. 
It also has some other over-the-top options like the M.2 heatsink having heat pipes and a vapor chamber. On the rear I.O. it does drop another USB port, but in return the Thunderbolt ports are Gen 5, so with 80 uh, instead of 40 gigabits of bandwidth. And here you do get a 10 gigabit Ethernet as well. Now in order to see which one makes the most sense to get, uh, we first need to look at the prices. And as we've seen with previous generations of motherboards, uh, both on Intel and AMD side, high-end motherboards are all very expensive. So the Tough Gaming motherboard is the only board that is under $400 or euros, uh, but it is still way more than what we used to pay a few years ago. But if you compare it to previous generations Z790 board, the difference is fairly small and not really out of place. So if you want something even cheaper, you will have to wait for cheaper chipset boards that should come out next year. Also, uh, do remember that these prices are recommended retail prices and most of these motherboards will get cheaper over time. Anyway, unless you have some really specific needs, like a ton of USB ports, for example, or more than four NVMe SSDs, uh, there is no reason to spend more than what this tough model costs. It is in the lowest position in this stack right here, but it is such a solid all-around motherboard and it already has more than enough features for most PC builds and most PC cases out there, including Type-C options, uh, Gen 5 GPU and SSD support, a decent power delivery even for the highest end CPUs, uh, enough uh, fan and RGB headers, and you also get all the practical things as well, like not needing tiny M.2 screws, uh, having an integrated I.O., uh, easy GPU release system, and so on. So my only gripe is that last heatsink on one of the M.2 slots, but that is easily fixable with a third-party heatsink that you can get for a couple of euros or dollars. If you do want to get a board that offers a bit more, I do think that the Strix range does add some useful extras that you might like and might want to pay more for. Uh, I think the Strix A's main appeal will be the uh, white silver design, uh, while the F model uh, does add a few more extras over the tough gaming board, like that extra USB 3 header, uh, extra M.2 slot, extra overkill power design, plus those 14 USB ports on the back. Now, it does cost significantly more than the tough gaming motherboard, uh, but I do feel like you're also getting something significant in return. But when it comes to value, uh, things do get a bit more rough with the Hero board. Now, I really love the way it looks. Uh, it's always been such a complete package that is just very nice to work with, and that's why we use it on all of our test benches, pretty much. But the Hero has gotten extremely expensive. It costs 270 euros more than the Strix, and for that money, it just needs to have zero compromises. So uh, seeing them cheap out on the 10 gig LAN port yet again just stings a bit. I mean, there's some things you might want to pay for, uh, like the extra type C header, a sixth M.2 slot, and dual LAN, but those are things you can work around for much less money. Uh, only the hex display is something that I know some of you might want. So just like with the last generation of motherboards, I do feel like the Strix has become what the Hero used to be, uh, which is an almost everything motherboard for a high, but still somewhat justifiable price. The Apex is a bit of a unique board that you cannot really compare in the same way as the others. It is meant for hardcore overclockers, so some of them will probably get one cent to them by ASUS, and many of them will probably spend way more on CPUs for binning because it is meant for breaking overclocking records and that kind of justifies uh, whatever it costs. But the Extreme will cost you 1,400 euros here in Europe or between 13 to 1,400 dollars in the US. And there is no way you can reasonably justify that price. It is a flagship model with all the bells and whistles and it is meant for showing off and putting it in an over the top, very expensive PC build. So I get that ASUS has to make a board like that so they can show what they can do in one product. But with its price tag, I am pretty sure they will only be making a very small amount of these motherboards. Anyway, uh, that is all I had for today. But before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video.
This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the end of this video. Uh, please let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions about these motherboards and uh, if you're interested in other brands as well because I do expect to get a few more models in the coming days and hopefully the new CPUs that will launch soon as well. So uh, if you want to see that, uh, make sure you click that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.